So are you thinking about moving to Las Vegas? Or have you been voluntold to move to Las Vegas, aka your PCSing or your job has moved here? Well, why move here? What are the pros and cons? Well, stick around and I'm going to go over all the pros and cons of living in Las Vegas so you'll have a new nugget of information. My name is Eric Hudson. I am a real estate agent here in the Las Vegas area. And on this channel, you learn everything there is about moving to Las Vegas, living in Las Vegas, and of course the housing market. And every day, good folks like you are reaching out by phone, text, or email to get your housing questions answered. If you have any questions about moving to Las Vegas, living in Las Vegas, or of course, purchasing or selling a home in Las Vegas, just hit us up by phone, text, or email, and we'll get right back to you. So, you're thinking about coming to Las Vegas and you're not going to be a tourist? Well, why come here? What are the pros? What are the cons? So, let's start going over these pros and cons and see if this is really the place you want to be. So, we'll start off by going through the pros. And the first pro is the cost of living. Believe it or not, the cost of living in Las Vegas, outside of the Strip, is actually very reasonable. Now, it's only 3% higher than the national average. But you're going like, wait a minute, 3% higher? Wait, but if you look at other large cities of this size, it's actually pretty low. Portland, Oregon, for example, is 29% higher than the national average. So compare that, 3%, 29%. A lot of cities are much more higher than that. Think about New York, Boston, Miami, uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles. So you're getting that big city without the big city cost. Next thing that's a good pro, could be a con, but for now we're gonna call it a pro. This is Las Vegas. Everyone on the planet knows Las Vegas. It is the entertainment capital of the world. You will never run out of things to do. It is 24 seven, go, go, go. So if you're down on that strip, you will always have something to do. And throughout most of the city, I remember when I moved here, it was surprising that everything was open 24 hours. The Burger King, the supermarkets, everything was 24 hours. How do you beat that? What other city do you know where everything is 24 hours? I, I can remember when I was uh, living in Oklahoma in the Air Force, uh, stuff closed at 9 p.m. Wasn't open on Sundays. Yeah, it's open on Sundays here. Like I said, 24-7. There's always something to do. Yeah, trust me, you will never get bored living in Las Vegas. Next pro that can be a con is the weather. Believe it or not, for eight months out of the year, the weather here is pretty darn good. I mean, very good. The falls and the springs, oh my goodness, it is the most gorgeous weather you'll ever want. It's perfect. It's almost as perfect as when I was living in Hawaii, except it's a drier climate. And um, some people may prefer a dry climate because it's better for their health. Uh, about the only drawback I can see from the weather, other than the one kind we're going to talk about, is um, you're going to need some lotion. Uh, it is dry. Winters, very, very mild. And you still can do winter things. Uh, we'll talk about the winter things a little bit later, but man, for that eight months, it is a dream. The next pro, Las Vegas is a foodie's delight. I don't care what restaurant it is, it's here in Vegas. We even have Chick-fil-A wow. now. It, that, that actually used to be a big deal because the owners of Chick-fil-A said they would never open in Las Vegas because they called it Sin City. But, you know, now we got Chick-fil-A's everywhere. Those chicken sandwiches are good. So anyway, when you go down to that strip, and those casinos are world-class restaurants. Every major chef has a restaurant here in Las Vegas. I don't know how true it is, but I was once told that more shrimp is consumed in Las Vegas every day than the rest of the country combined. You got world-class buffets. Now I have to warn you, those uh, $5.95 buffets, they're gone. You know, you'd be lucky to find a $14.95 buffet at some of the lower-end casinos. But when you get to those high-end casinos, oh my goodness. You coming home fat if you're just coming to Vegas to visit. And if you live here, you go down there every once in a while, you're going to get fat. 
That could be a con, but for now, we're gonna call world-class restaurants a pro. Next pro, and I know a lot of you are gonna love this one, there is no state income tax. None, nada. They don't even uh, play around like Florida that has no state income tax, but there is tax on your investment income. It's none of that. On top of that, the sales tax, even though I, I can't lie, I complain about the sales tax, uh, but I found out they're cheaper than the surrounding states. So you are taxed less here. And then let's talk about property tax. You'll be surprised how low property taxes are. If you have a half a million dollar house, your taxes are going to average about $3,500 a year. Can you imagine if you're from New Jersey? I mean, I was once looking at a guy's house in New Jersey, just, you know, being a little bit of real estate spy. And I'm like, oh, okay, you no, know, he paid X amount. And I looked at his taxes. I was like, dang, he was paying more in taxes than I'm paying on my mortgage. Real estate taxes are very inexpensive here. And here's a bonus tip. If you are a disabled veteran, you can actually get a break on your taxes. And some disabled veterans, according to what type of house they own, don't pay. They don't pay any taxes anyway. I'm serious. The taxes are really that low. There are very few states with lower taxes than we have here in Nevada. Next pro. So we're kind of getting into that entertainment uh, little arena again. It's outdoor activities. There is so much to do here. Remember a moment ago when I said I'll talk about the winters a little bit more? Well, you are right in the epicenter of everything. You know, you're just a few hours away from Brian Head. We have uh, skiing here in the Las Vegas area. On Mount Charleston, there is actually a ski lodge and you can go up there and do skiing and snowboarding, playing all in the snow and everything. I call that a pro. Uh, there's also other things. If you're into um, hiking, we have it. Biking, we have it. Uh, you wanna go out and uh, rip up the dunes with your sand rail or your dirt bike, we have it. It's all here. Now the next is the traffic. Well, traffic isn't that bad compared to some other places. I know I complain about the roads and everything, but I've talked to people from SoCal and they're sitting around talking about it's not a big deal to drive two hours to a dinner. I'm like, two hours to a dinner? I'm mad as heck when I have to drive an hour in traffic to the other side of town. So without traffic, you can get most parts of this place from one end to the other in about 45 minutes. So I don't feel that's too bad for a large city. Now with the good comes the bad. So let's start with what I consider one of the bad things. Remember I said we had eight months of great weather? Well, what happens those other four months? They're called summer or in Espanol, El Verano. It's hot. I say calor. Yeah, it is hot. I mean, it gets well over the hundreds. I can remember when I arrived in Las Vegas, I came here for my house hunting during the spring. It was great weather. I arrived here during the summer, it was July. We picked up our cars from the port because we're coming from overseas. We drive in here, we get to where we were standing, I opened the door and I felt that oven and I slammed that door. I was like, whoa, what's this? It's hot, trust me. And uh, bang that crap about a dry heat. It's hot, okay? Next con is there's a lack of community and community charm. Uh, a lot of times you don't know who your neighbors are. It's like no one seems to care. I live next door to someone. I didn't see them for years. It's like, does anyone even live there? I mean, I think it was like two years before I saw the garage door open and saw them. Uh, people on the other side of me right now. Uh, I have seen them one time. And it's like, what? Nobody talks to anybody over here. I don't know the people across the street and to the right of me. And they've been there for a couple of years. Nobody talks to anybody here. I, I, only neighbors I talk to is the one to my left, who, I mean, not the old one, uh, the new one, and the one across the street. And a little bit to the one uh, to, to the right of him, left of me, who just moved. He was actually like the assistant warden up at the prison. But you know, that's it, there, there, there is no real community here, except for you know, folks in their church or something like that, and maybe their job. No, there's nothing here. 
I mean, there's meetups and stuff like that, but you know. Next, the school systems. Clark County School District is one of the largest in the country. And you know what? The problems they have in all these large school systems they have here, many of the schools are subpar. Now you can get around that. They're charter schools and they're actually some world-class school systems here if you live in the right sides of the town. For the majority of the town, it's subpar education. It may not prepare your children for college. It is what it is and you're gonna have to deal with it and you're gonna probably have to spend a little bit more time uh, in tutoring. And if your kids are into sports, uh, the high school sports teams here are not well followed. Uh, they have club teams here. That's the big thing. So take that as what it is. You're gonna move to an area, unless you're moving into some of the more posh sides of town, that's gonna have a subpar school system. Lack of job opportunity. Yep, unemployment rate is low, but you know what? There's a lot of low paying jobs here in Vegas and tied to that tourist industry down on the strip. So right now, the jobs are fairly plentiful even after COVID is over. Uh, but the job security may not be there. There is a lot tied to that strip. Even though the economy is trying to diversify itself right now, if you're moving here, you're an engineer, you're a physicist, all that jazz, uh, yeah, you're gonna have a hard time. I'm just being upfront with you. Next con, lack of uh, transportation. We don't have a subway system here. We don't have the L. Uh, we do have buses, uh, but bus stops outside of certain areas? I mean, I think I, my nearest bus stop is a mile away. Can you imagine walking a mile just to catch a bus? You need a car here in Vegas. And uh, yeah, you need a car bad. This is not a walking city. This is a driving city. So there are no little cafes for you to walk on the beach hand in hand and then drop into a funky new cafe and explore things. No, you better get yourself a car and you're gonna be driving. So good thing the traffic isn't as bad here as it is in places like California. Now this next con, man, it's a special one for me. Lack of greenery. This place is brown. It's very brown. I can remember when I was flying here for the first time, uh, looked for a house. I was coming from Hawaii. I was sitting next to a couple there from Vegas, and they're like, well, you're going to get used to the uh, brownness. There's a lack of everything. It's sparse. And I've landed. You know what? It, it, it's a desert. It's a desert. And they're making it more of a desert because they are now restricting things like building pools. They're now restricting uh, putting in grass. They are literally ripping up grass around the city to make the city look more ugly. That's great. You know what? They're about to make the mistakes Houston made. You know, they're trying to look like they're doing something, but they, they ain't doing crap. Because first of all, uh, the water that we get here, which comes from Lake Mead and all these places, is only 4%. We only get used up 4% of the water. The rest of it goes to the surrounding states and mainly California. Do you know why? Because they haven't updated the formula for a hundred years. So they're going to try to make a dent in something by ripping up the grass, making the place look ugly. By the way, by ripping up the vegetation, it's going to make the place hotter. It's just common science. And they're going to make mistakes other places have made. Like in Houston, remember those floods they had in Houston after that hurricane? Do you know why it was caused that way? Because they ripped up the grass and put in concrete and rock and crap and the ground cannot absorb the water. It wouldn't have been so bad if there was grass. Now, we, we don't have a, a hurricane that's coming our way, but I do know that grass absorbs heat or reflects it or whatever. It, it makes it a little bit better. Whereas concrete and rock, it reflects that stuff right up on you. Uh, I hate doing dumb stuff. And I find this to be one of the dumbest things in the world. Oh, we don't want to water the grass. You mean the, the water that's either going to go back into the ground? By the way, we have a lot of groundwater here. Or is it going to get absorbed by the sun? It, it, it's a cycle. It's going to go someplace. But one of the things is you would have made the place look beautiful and more welcoming. Number seven, you may not have to worry about this one. You could get partied out because there is so much to do here. 
and uh, you may not have enough money to do it, or it's going to put you in a fix because you're going to go bankrupt because you're going to be spending all that money on the strip, gambling and going to shows and all that good food. Uh, it can be a con because there's a lot of diversion here. And when we talked about the summer, those utilities, uh, they can be steep. They can be a lot. If you own a large house with a uh, couple of air conditioning units, if you have what type of pool motor you have, it could use up as much uh, electricity as an air conditioner. So you got a two-story house, a pool, you got three full air conditioners running. And if they're older and not efficient, mm, you talk about four, five, six hundred dollar bills in the summer. But you know what? I'll talk about bills in another video because uh, there is a sore spot with me with some people, how they handle their bills. A little bit of time, watch one of our other videos because we're trying to put all the great videos out there to help you out as much as humanly possible. And if you have found just a little bit of help from this video, do us a favor and hit that subscribe button and the notification button. And of course, like a video.